Two years ago, Henrik Husby wanted to import the best quality iPhone screens that he could for his customers. So he went to a company that somebody reputable in the business had recommended and said was a good company that at the time sold good screens. He asked them for their highest grade of screens. Not high quality copy, not low quality copy, but the closest thing to OEM. And he paid out the ass for the closest thing to OEM. After he did so, he imported them and they were seized. Apple wound up suing him when he decided that he was not simply going to pay a one-time settlement fee or a fine and destroy all of the inventory. Henrik Husby claimed that those screens were refurbished. Apple said they're counterfeit because they have an Apple logo on it. Many people in the industry, like me, said, of course they have an Apple logo on it. That You put the Apple logo on the LCD flex cable and the LCD is being reused. So obviously it's going to have a logo on it. Are you really trying to define refurbishing as counterfeiting? After getting access to the internal documents of the case, I realized that not only was the Apple logo on the LCD flex cable, it was also being printed on the glass that was being used to refurbish them. So the glass and the frame and everything that was being used to refurbish the screen into a working screen had an Apple logo printed on it that was a poor quality low quality cheap knockoff of the original Apple logo meaning that some jackass Yahoo that had nothing to do with Apple or their manufacturing process decided to put that logo on there there was absolutely no reason to put that logo on there it makes no sense I don't care if it has an Apple logo on it my customer doesn't care all we care about as repair shops and all our customers care about is that we're putting a good part into their products they don't look at the logo on the screen after doing some research and digging and speaking to my suppliers as well as prom refurbishers in the industry, I realized that the reason that that Apple logo was put there is because they would like to be able to sell those as Apple original, like full Apple original, not even refurbished. They'd like to be able to lie and claim that those are new from Apple's factory themselves with Tim Cook's blessing in China. They want to be able to misrepresent the product in China. Now, my question is, why are they then selling that item to us when we make it very clear that we don't care if the logo is there? That's a great question. The factory figures, we would have to make a separate print of these screens for people in China who would like to misrepresent them as Apple new and another set for people in America and Europe who don't really care and are just selling them as refurbs. And we don't want to put in the work to do that. So rather than put in the work to do that, we're just going to put the fake Apple logos on everything. And if anybody just so happens to get caught or in trouble with the customs office or have any sort of legal problems in that country, that's on them. They already wired us the money. It's not like we take credit card and PayPal. It's not like they could file a chargeback. So who cares? They'll deal with it anyway. Anyway, and what I'm trying to do here is set a precedent that, uh, no, we won't. A, I understand why Apple is aggravated. If somebody is printing a fake Apple logo onto something that they did not make, that th there's no point to that. If you're reusing the original LCD and it has an Apple logo on it, that's cool, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. And I'm not going to go on the record for Apple, but I would imagine they would have less of a problem with that. But when you refurbish the screen with some other part and you stamp an Apple logo that is fake onto that part that you put on there with a fake serial number, that is where Apple gets involved. That's where they say, we don't like this. And that's where even I can admit that Apple has a clear-cut point there and something to be agitated at. Now, that also means that we as repair shop owners have something to be agitated at because there's no reason for that logo to be there. And when this factory says, yeah, I know you don't want that logo to be there. I know that logo risks you getting in trouble with the law in your country. I know that logo being there means there's a risk of five to $10,000 of your parts being seized and thrown away with no recourse to you. But fuck you, we're putting it there anyway because we don't give a shit about you that we we then need to respond. So here's how I'm responding. Firstly, I told my vendors, every single one of them, that if you're selling me a product that's used or was the original and has an Apple logo on it, that's fine. But if you are selling me an aftermarket and they put a fake Apple logo on it, it's not good enough anymore that you just cover that shit up or anything like that. I don't want to buy those products. So tell those factories to stop doing that. And if they don't stop doing that, stop buying from them. The second thing that I think is really important to show solidarity with people like Henrik Husby is to tell Jack Telecom, if we are purchasing from them, oh, by the way, we'd love to make an order from you as soon as you pay Henrik Husby's legal fees and pay for all the merchandise that was destroyed, I'll be happy to do business with you. Had the factory not been lazy asses and decided we are going to print this glass or we are going to print the screen without a fake Apple logo on it so that when we export it to other countries, they don't risk getting in trouble with the law, none of this would have happened whatsoever, which means that the blame for this issue lies with Jack Telecom and lies with companies that use 
use these factories that decide they're going to put fake logos on products. If you want to make aftermarket glass, that's cool. If you want to refurbish the screens, that's great. If you want to refurbish these screens and keep the original Apple logo that was on the LCD Flex, I'm okay with that. But when you put a fake logo on that screen for no reason and then reject people's ability to say, I don't want that logo on the product, and you don't tell them that that logo is going to be on the product, and then you don't offer any after-sale service or support when they get in trouble with the law, that's on you, and I think that there should be a financial repercussion for that in the form of us all deciding we are not going to do business with you until you pay Henrik Husby's legal fees, until you pay Henrik Husby's fine, and so you replace every single screen that Henrik Husby bought and paid for that was seized by customs as a result of you deciding that you wanted to fuck with other people just so that you could save a little bit of time on your production line. What happened here is that Henrik Husby wanted to buy as close to the original screen as possible. That's what he paid for. That's what it said on the invoice. Jack Telecom put fake Apple logos on parts of the screen that did not need to have Apple logos there. And as a result of them doing that, Henrik Husby got in trouble with customs. He got in trouble with Apple. He had to pay out the ass in legal fees. And he likely had all of his stuff confiscated and destroyed. And have to pay a fine. I don't understand why it is that Henrik should have to bear the brunt of that rather than the supplier that lied to him and sold him shit under a false premise. Now, you may be saying that it is impossible to hold vendors like Jack Telecom accountable because vendors like Jack Telecom operate in China where they don't care about copyright, trademark, or counterfeiting or any of that stuff. And you're right. You cannot hold them legally accountable in China. That's a laughable thing to try to do. However, you can hold them financially accountable. Companies like Jack Telecom make millions upon millions of dollars of selling to people like us, repair shops and also iPhone screen suppliers in the United States, Europe, and many other countries. So if they lost all of our business as a result of this, they would be forced to change their ways. And I think we should work to do that. We should message them and say, we are not ordering from you ever again until A, you cut out the putting fake Apple logos on products, but more importantly, you pay Henrik Husby's legal fees for him since it's your fault, it was your fraud, it was your bullshit that got him in trouble with customs and Apple in his country. So once you pay his legal fees, once Jack Telecom pays Henrik's fines, once Jack Telecom replaces all the merchandise that was seized that Henrik paid for, then we will do business with Jack Telecom again. Until that point, I don't think anybody involved in the repair business, whether you're a repair shop owner, a franchise owner, or a supplier that sells screens to the general public, should give Jack Telecom a dime. Because what you may be thinking is, that just happened to Henrik. Maybe they didn't put the Sharpie over the logo properly. I understand why they're doing it. That's not going to happen to me. Yes, it will. The person who says that, the person who says that's probably not going to happen to me, that is going to happen to you. That's going to happen to you at the worst possible time. And unlike Henrik Husby, who probably only had to pay somewhere between ten dollars to $20,000 in fines, when it happens to you, you may be facing federal prison time. You may be facing some sort of multi-million dollar fine as a result of it. Do you really not want to take a stand here and tell Chinese suppliers to stop scamming their customers when you are one of their customers who could get scammed in the same way. I don't think so. I think this is an excellent opportunity to take a stand and say, we don't like what Apple does. We don't like that they don't sell us parts. We don't like that they make it as difficult as possible to repair their products. We don't like how they close off sources in the supply chain. We don't like how they tell the vendors that sell them parts. If somebody else comes to you and says they want to buy an ISL 19 Four zero, don't give it to them. But at the same time, we don't support people misrepresenting products as something that they are not. We don't think it's cool that a company go out of their way when it is not necessary to do so to print fake Apple logos and fake serial numbers on products. And that if you do so, and if you try and shift the legal and financial risk to us, the purchaser, rather than you, the seller, then we are never going to give you money again. Let's let all of those factories know, every single one of them that thinks it's not worth it because they're wiring us money and if they wind up getting their stuff taken or their business winds up going out of business as a result of getting fined out the ass, well, who cares? There'll just be somebody else that pops up to take their place. No, there won't be because the iPhone repair shop that pops up to take Henrik Husby's place if he is forced to go out of business as a result of these fees is not going to buy from Jack Telecom, is not going to buy from any of these companies that scam people in the United States 
markets in Europe when we try to buy products that are OEM by falsely putting Apple logos on there when they're not supposed to be there. I don't want these factories to continue laughing and going, yeah, who cares? We got their money. It doesn't matter if they're in prison. It doesn't matter if they close down. It doesn't matter if Customs takes their stuff because we lied to them and put Apple logos on shit that wasn't actually fucking OEM. No. Fuck that. It's time for that to change. Boycott Jack Telecom. Don't give them a fucking dime until they have paid every single cent of Henrik Husby's legal fees. And I don't want to hear any of that sorry horse crap about how I'm just one person. I'm just one company. I'm just one supplier. I'm just one franchise. I can't make change. I don't want to hear any of that sorry horse crap. When you think that it's not going to change unless there's a large group of people, well, guess what large groups of people are? Large groups of people are individuals that all decide that they are going to get together to create change. However, if none of the individuals think that they can create change because every one of the individuals is waiting for the group, then there is no group. The group starts with you. So if you want Chinese vendors to stop taking advantage of us, and if you don't want to be the next Henrik Husby, then you are going to ask for change right now. There are hundreds of thousands thousands of vendors that are spamming your email inbox willing to sell you screens at any given point in time. So why give money to a vendor that has caused Henrik Husby to go through five figures of legal fees and hassle when you could buy from somebody who actually cares? I'm not excusing the fact that Apple has set up a supply chain to where independent repair is virtually impossible. I'm not excusing how Apple treats the customer. I'm not excusing how Apple treats us. But at the same time, I'm not excusing Jack Telecom's conscious decision to put a fake logo on a part that did not require that fake logo to be there, thus putting us all at risk. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something.